Twitter won't be back this soon and don't worry about when I hear. I come and I go like a deadbeat father dog. I'm grateful to my friend. My friend got me this tea when she was traveling to France. Um, it's actually a herbal African tea, so I guess that's the spices that they traveled for. Um, anyways. Vince Staples, Earl Sweatshirt, Mac Miller. Good names, good ass names. I like names. Names kind of have like a, a vibe to them, a bravado to them, if you please. Like it, how to put it? It lets you know what you're about to enter sometimes. Or it could like demand authority. The first thing that you can, the first gift you can give or the first L that you can give to your child is a name. You can start with something like um, Xavier the Fort uh, Livingston. So he's like Russian and Jamaican. Or you could go with like Sean. You could damn your child to like poverty and like domestic abuse. Or you could set him up for like riches and high esteem. Names are very important to me and important to everyone else in the world. Within fashion, there are a lot of nice names. There are a lot of powerful, creative, dynamic, alluring, eerie names but today i want to talk about like brand names so names that aren't the name of the designer the first one i want to look at is a cold wall and once again i'm starting by letting my bias be known i'm proclaiming my bias i am very biased where samuel ross is concerned i think he's a magnificent designer i really like samuel ross i'm gonna start with this passage that i took from an interview that he said uh, about the meaning of a cold wall. Our entire society is based on walls. That slightly unpleasant feeling of rubbing your hand against a wall, that barrier is a feeling everybody knows. Yeah, he's referring to like dilapid dilapidated white walls and a cold wall is centered around um, the British working class, the blue collar working class. And I love how the, the name, uh, as simple as it is, kind of, hmm, bridge the gap huh. bridge the gap of communication of the wants and needs and the voices of the blue collar working class within that british system that i myself can't speak on i i don't live there i don't understand it some of the core elements of a cold wall is uh, industrial design and um product design and yeah no sorry architecture industrial design product design and i feel like the wall is a, a, a very good construction that encapsulates or like that takes all of those features and puts it into some of the simplest things that we have designed that has stand through our time and continues to develop and continues to like mutate and improve like the wall is literally the structure of any building and you can i, I take take the same concept and put it towards fashion i supposed to be a little faster than that normally i have an issue with that however i want to do six brands in two minutes <laughs> The next one I want to look at is Arcteryx. And Arcteryx is a name that you, if you read or like look at fashion in any capacity, you might be familiar with it because it's a brand very um, well known within Go Up Course slash uh, Techwear. It kind of falls into both aspects, you know, like it bounces back and forth. And Go Up Core, here we go, up core. Arcteryx, the name goes. I can't pronounce that name, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I'll put it up, I'll put it up. And Arcteryx kind of represents the evolution of human drive. It's survivalism, uh, survivalism and morphology. Like I, I use those two terms because survivalism talks about, I guess the evolution of man and the, the things that we do to continue to, for lack of a better word, survive like if you look at a turtle you look at a turtle and you see the shell on it like just the fact that the turtle was designed like that and the shell being the exterior to protect them either against assailants or whatever that is survivalism and we take concepts like that and we implement it into our human design whether it's like our backpacks or we use like we use it in our any gear that protects the back of us that is kind of the concept of survivalism and i think Arcteryx, given the name and it's tied to like um, dinosaurs, <laughs> it's kind of what it's tied to. Arcteryx name represents the idea of accelerating evolution, helping to drive human progression in the outdoors. The next name I want to look at is C2H4, which is the molecular compound for ethylene. This was created by Yixi Shen 
Y I X I C H E N. Um, I think she's she's Chinese, but she's from Los Angeles. And there are like many meanings attached to the name. So the meaning of her brand C2H4, as I said, is ethylene. And it's kind of tied around chemistry, even from the name to the direction that she takes the brand. In science, advanced technologies can influence how people think, also their lifestyles. In design, C2H4 is creating its own perspective of futurism. I took that from an interview that I read about the brand. C2H4 believes one day that the traditional definition of clothes will then be, I guess, revised or be replaced with something else. It's kind of like wearable content or like um, wearable material, livable clothes. Like, let me see if I can find it. The term used was wearable devices and when i think about that concept i usually think about smartphones because the smartphones we were introduced to back in i don't know 2002 2005 however long ago it was is certainly not the devices that we use today like yes we refer to the things that we use as smartphones still but i promise you they aren't anyway close to what they used to be like whatever we're using right now those aren't smartphones like we haven't created a name for it yet but it's not smartphones. It's something that has evolved so much that it's not even close to what it used to be. Like the amount of things we can do on our phone now, it's like galaxies away from where we originally started. And I feel the same about C2H4 implementing the idea of clothes being more wearable devices than anything else. The chemical concept of uh, clothes are just mixing matters together and they take that idea and they implement it in like revolutionizing the materials that they use, uh, implementing substances and fabrics that they typically wouldn't use. Uh, I was even looking at one of their collections where they were using a material that I guess it couldn't decay or like it couldn't age or couldn't be like biodegradable. The next one I want to look at is Off-White. It's also not a fashion brand. Of course it is, but it's to inspire kids. If you think Off-White's too expensive, that's great. You're supposed to make your own t-shirt brand. Um, yeah, very popular name, but I never really knew what it meant. And after all the interviews and the documentaries and like the just all the content that i have consumed about virgil i was i was kind of surprised that i didn't know the meaning until i started reading about it and it's pretty simple off-white is not black not white and i guess the two extremes he looked at as one side being high fashion high luxury fashion and the other one being streetwear and i guess it, it's kind of like bridging the gap of the perception that high fashion is um, expensive and very thought out, whereas streetwear is cheap and less, uh, I, I, the word I'm looking for is, I guess, intellectually complex, like, whereas with high fashion, people perceive it to be more well-developed and high class and expensive, and he's kind of like bridging that gap, so it's not black, it's not white, it's somewhere in the middle of the grays, hence the word off-white. That's what I picked up on the internet. If that's wrong, correct me, and I'm sorry. I'm, I could be wrong too. I'm sorry. Uh, something that I also read was that um, the base of the company is in Milan and that also, what does juxtapose mean? I want to use that. Juxtapose between the high fashion and the streetwear. Like, it's a streetwear brand making hoodies and cargos and stuff like that. But it's located in Milan where it's getting like Italian ateliers to do the crafting of it. Casablanca by Shafa Tajir. I think I did a great job there. I'm gonna run it back one more time. I, I was proud of that. Let's go again. Casablanca by Shafa Teje. A Morocco man, Moroccan, Moroccan man. Yeah, and I, I, Casablanca is very simple, very simple. It came from the place where his boat, his parents met, uh, where they fell in love. It's name it is Casablanca. It's located in Morocco, but he's like uh, Parisi Par Parisian. That's how you say it? Parisian, Parisian. Parisian, yeah, yeah. He born and grew up in Paris, but like his family, his mom, his dad is from Morocco. The last one I wanna look at is Proleta Re-Art. Thank you, my good sir. Proleta Re-Art means a proletarian worker 
and have nots in a capitalist society. And proletarian, the term kind of comes from the proletariat and the bourgeoisie. That's kind of like a um, Marxist philosophy. Opiates are the masses, burn on the capitalists, even though he himself was a capitalist, but we're not gonna get into that right now. And the purpose of it was to reincarnate worn, tattered, um, and undesirable pieces that are now like left to decide. It's a very specific technique that they use to um, reuse and to um, embroider the denim. Embroider is maybe not the word I'm looking for, but I love I love the concept of proletary art because it's a more realistic take on um, sustainability within fashion. Like you're not always gonna have all the uh, the best sustainable materials and also in creating the best sustainable materials sometimes the production aspect of it uh, isn't good for the environment sometimes what it takes to create the biodegradable or the sustainable fabrics do more harm to the environment than just making the regular fabrics there were two more brands that i wanted to touch on but i got nothing about it one was Ambush and the other one was Namacheco. With Ambush, I'm very familiar with Ambush and the pieces and the accessories and the history and the Rihanna and blah, 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 blah. I get it. But the meaning of the word Ambush within like the brand's philosophy, I never found it. I couldn't find it. If you do know it, please share it with me. I would love to know. And the other one was Namacheco. While I was reading up about it, it had in brackets, this means no meaning. I was like, that's not true. I just don't have access to it. So if you have the meaning of Namacheco, please leave it as well. Uh, thank you for watching this video. This has been another video by Nighttime Made in Trinidad and Tobago. Shalom. Inshallah. Yeah, you cut that bitch off. <laughs>